I'm curious, what were you able to do today that you were, you were not able to do in the last <laughs> six years as chairman of well, EACC? I, I was just resting. I thought, uh, thanking God for what has happened. I'm quite relaxed. In fact, you called me out of my relaxation. Oh, <laughs> I apologize for that. But it's okay. It's mm -hmm. nice that I've come. So were you able to sleep in a little bit or uh, you woke up at the well, usual time? Uh, well, you know, I need to work around the house and mm -hmm. uh, compound. And uh, there's quite a lot to do. Look at the chicken. Uh, just to see things now in a better perspective than when you are hurrying, uh, going to work. Yeah. All right. So yes. I, I will get into the question of what next at the end, uh, <laughs> okay. towards the end. Thank you. Uh, but before you took up the job of uh, EACC chairman, yes. <coughs> you were the first. You are the first to have served out the full tenure, being at the helm of, an, of uh, Kenya's anti-corruption agency, that is the EACC. And I gave a lo long list of names right at the start of the news hour, knowing that. Were you hesitant about taking the job? Why did you take up the job? Well, I was hesitant, and basically I didn't know that I would have to take this job. Uh, but as things stood at that time, it looked like somebody has to do the job. Because uh, I think there was a first advert, it was not uh, responsive. And the second one, which attracted maybe were six of us. <laughs> um, but basically I had worked as Archbishop and at the same time chairing a committee which was called uh, the National Anti-Corruption Campaign, campaign, committee. campaign against So really yes. that gave me an opportunity to see the magnitude of corruption and how uh, handling it through the ethics part could perhaps give an impact. So I was attracted there because I understood what the ethics part of it uh, entailed. But I didn't really know the magnitude of what lay ahead for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was uh, something that just came like out of the blue and then the conviction that yes, somebody has to do the job. Uh, I consulted a few people, everybody was negative, they didn't want me there. <laughs> my family, my Christians all over the country, even outside Kenya, they say that's not possible. I consulted uh, my late dad and he told me you can go, I pray for you. And that, that's all. Mm. So I signed a few papers they wanted me to do, and the process started. So the rest is history. <laughs> Did you, being a man of the cloth, yes. is it something you prayed over? A lot of prayers, and uh, actually soul searching. Yeah, it was not easy. Mm. Yeah, it was not easy. And that time, things were not like they are today. Uh, 2016, 2017, uh, ESCC was not something you would, you would wish to associate yourself with. And so it took a lot of prayers. I had very few prayer partners at that time on that issue. Uh, but uh, once I got in, the, some of the religious leaders, like uh, Bishop Kitonga and the rest, who were part of my team in those days, we came together and they prayed for me and they encouraged me to go. And uh, I went. When I went to that office, they also came. Uh, from the Muslim and the Christian side, and we stayed there for, they would come regularly just to give me courage and uh, encouragement. So I think I managed to get that kind of support, but uh, opinion polls all over the country as usual, they are negative. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but I was determined because I knew um, corruption has problems, has challenges for this nation. And uh, in the scriptures, it's also a scene. So I thought, after I have done the work in theory, for example, now I'm doing it practically, and also understand the human nature even deeper. So I went to ESCC uh, with that kind of environment. Members of parliament who were interviewing me were wondering whether, what will happen? <laughs> uh, I told them, well, let me go. Um, if things don't work, I'll go home, I'll go to my family. <laughs> but I knew that God was in that uh, uh, calling that I was entering. Mm. Yeah. So um, I went to ESCC, yes. And then I said, if ESCC has people, human beings, <laughs> then why can't I work with them? Because uh, there was a time I was posted to a parish by a bishop, which was quite remote. But I told the bishop, well, the moment I go to a place where there are human beings, 
I will definitely work. And I went there. Up to today, those people are still my friends in a small parish uh, in Mount Elgon called Capsitate. They are friends up to now. So I said, I will go to East Zanzi. And for sure, I went there. I found a big team. And they were very good people. I called them first day. We were in our basement. And uh, I told them, I read a text of scripture and asked them, do you think corruption is a bad thing in the country? They said, yes. What, did you come here by force or you applied to come? They told me, your grace, we applied to come. So why can't we do the job? <laughs> they said, yes, we are going to do it. I asked them, we are going to work as a team. We are, we are going to work uh, as a family. And we are going to be focused on what it is. Okay. Yeah, so we started like that. And uh, I thank God up to today, that team. I never changed anybody. They are still there. The same, same people <coughs> who their perception at first was very bad. But of course, I've done quite a lot of administrative issues within, which turned around everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, same, same people are working very hard. They are focused. And uh, as I speak today, I think when well supported, yes, this is a very strong institution. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm curious, why do you think you succeeded? where others failed and i ask that because when you were being sworn in yes. on the 23rd of january 2017 yes, yes. this is what the former chief justice uh, david maraga had to say to you <laughs> uh so aside from him telling you that this job has the highest birth and death rate yes. in the public service <laughs> yes. he warned that they will use every trick in and out of the book to stall your efforts mm -hmm. they will try to capture institutions including yours undermine efforts however noble attack your person however unfair and attack your motives however innocent so is this how you found things now i think the chief justice then was describing what was in the air at that time the perception that ESC portrayed to kenya and that was very accurate but now when i looked at it and uh, after he described that awful <laughs> situation i i went prepared um, but what happens when you go to a place, basically, <coughs> in, in any form of management, people are very important. Uh, you go to a place, show that you have gone for the interests of those people. There may be many, there may be few, but my aim of going to ESC was to get the interests of the people who are there and see whether I can contribute to their welfare, to the to their good, you know. And that made, was very clear when I arrived. I told them, we must work together. This job has also meaning in your own life. Therefore, do you accept that we work together? He said, yes. And actually they vowed not to disturb our work. So the first thing I did was to get the people and we align ourselves to the same goal. And staff at the institution were exactly doing what I had asked them to do. Now my fellow commissioners, who I found there four of them, I became the fifth one, we became a team. And that cohesion of that team of ESC uh, commissioners and staff created a, a very formidable body that is there today. So I think the first starting point is the human capital. <clears throat> How do you uh, help to see that Everybody's working for the interests of the, of the institution, but at the same time, you are at the leadership level. You are there to ensure that people understand you are for their good. Mm. You are not there because you are a boss and you are going to make them suffer. No. It is making them improve, succeed, and succeed to do the job. Okay, so you were able to improve the working relationship between the commissioners and the secretariat because that had proven a challenge yes, yes, yes. Uh, previously. <coughs> and uh, so we have to take a break. But when we come yes. back, I ask uh, the immediate former chairman of the EACC, what about that uh, two billion shillings we were told is lost every day? What has he done in his tenure to seal that loss on the other side of this break? Uh, can I call you, still call you Mr. Chairman? Uh, before <laughs> we took the break, I talked about that two billion shillings. Yes. We're told that is lost daily. In your tenure, what have you done to address that? Okay, thank you so much. I think we left at a point where I had said we, I got staff and we got together. 
what then we did was to make a strategy that will help us operate. Uh, the commission receives very many reports uh, per month, but in a year almost 3,000. And these are many, you cannot deal with all of them. So as uh, commissioners, we sat and thought of a strategy that will help us at least achieve something in, the, in terms of all that that is there. As you are aware, the commission's mandate is also quite wide. Uh, apart from enforcement and uh, investigations and all that happens, we also have preventive uh, a mandate to s stop corruption, to teach about how to, to, to seal the loopholes in institutions that uh, people use to, in order to get corrupt, I mean to, to loot uh, property. We also had um, education and awareness as a, as a docket. So there are quite a lot of uh, activities happening. So we did um, a, a strategy where our focus was uh, then on high impact cases. Uh, we also focused on uh, cases that would have a lot of public interest. Like you remember there was the maze uh, scandal one time that created a lot of public interest. So it, 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 it uh, attracted our attention. Uh, we then also went on uh, a recovery of assets and an expand wealth. That became another focus that we had. And so uh, in that way then we zeroed down, especially on recovery, which is actually the latest approach, because we want to extinguish the, the need for people to get corrupt, because what happens is that people go get money, they get land in order to enjoy. So recovery has helped, and uh, you talk about two billion, there could be many more, because uh, if, if you put in place what happens on the roads, uh, the, the little, little corruption going on, even in the villages, you know, the headmen and the rest taking a little chicken here and there on the roads, then you come to the big, big major uh, corruption issues. So. Kenya is losing a lot of money, maybe three quarters, I mean two thirds or one third of the budget of the of, of all that we get gets lost on corruption. So um, we entered into recovery, and as I speak, I think we have like 22 point something billion of worth of movable and finances recovered. Okay. Yeah. And and when you talk about this small small corruption, is it that Kenyans have no moral fiber? <laughs> Well, I, I think that that's, that's a big topic, and perhaps it's, a, it's time to engage all of us, because we, we seem to have now wanted to create it as a culture. Uh, something just happens, and nobody seems to care. Uh, you can see sometimes when, when you, you hear people arrested, they are in court, but at the same time, another person is also stealing. So why is that our conscience is not pricked when these things happen? So it, it is something that... Uh, uh, calls on all of us, and I, perhaps uh, your first question was right when you said, why did you join to do this? This is something that not just like Bishop of Bukala or me or any other person, but all of us need to say, this is our country, uh, because corruption stands between us and, and the poverty we have. Corruption stands between us and uh, good health, and even our security is, is, is compromised because of corruption. And so it directly affects what we are and who we are today. Look at the huge unemployment in this country. Every home, every household has a person looking for a job. But if we actually managed corruption and put all these resources together, they could generate work for most of the people who are not there. Quality education, we need it. Quality health services, all this happens because we lose quite a lot of money, apart from, of course, uh, wrong use of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, something else that uh, <coughs> the former Chief Justice uh, David Maraga spoke to you about when you were sworn in uh, back in 2017 is he said the professional investigation of cases. Prosecute cases you can win. And in the recent weeks, we've seen a number of uh, high-profile cases withdrawn uh, by the DPP. Do Kenyans still have reason to have faith or keep the faith in the justice system? Well, I think as we speak today, uh, it, it has improved. It is working very well. The, the, the justice system I've been on, and uh, we had actually uh, my small kind of cup of tea farewell on 16th. 
and the GPP was there, and uh, the Chief Justice was there, and we realized we are really working well. Uh, ESCC does it very professionally. Uh, most of the cases you are talking about, none of them are, are from ESCC. Because uh, what, the, what we did as a strategy with uh, my fellow commissioners was to create a system of how cases flow before they go to the DPP. Uh, the report at the, at the port center is a committee which analyzes those cases. There are lawyers who will go through them. The investigators will go and do that. Then when they come from the case, they will be asked by the commission, all of us seated, to prove whether this case is genuine. They ask too many questions. They demonstrate that yes, evidence for this is ABC before now we sign to the DPP. And the DPP even uh, said that all our cases are intact. They are good. So I think that um, we have a lot of hope on that as Kenyans. I think we need to support these institutions as I leave them very stable, you know, Remember that that instability is, is gone, so it is stable and it can now collaborate with other stakeholders, including Kenyans like now myself, and work out towards uh, redeeming our country. I am calling it uh, perhaps a value-based approach to bring back our nation. That that uh, what you have talked about values, you know, that is very important because in those days that we <laughs> when we were young. There are several things which you are taught and things were okay. So we need to go back there again, continue working on it. It's a long-term issue. I know in Kenya we like to get results quickly, uh, but some, some things cannot be achieved overnight. You can see it is six years along the line when I came to this place. So a lot has been happening internally to bring that stability and now to start achieve uh, the recovery that we are doing on a very high scale. Uh, at this time. So we can partner together with the education institutions, with the media people like you, uh, with almost everybody else, with the a, with a thought that we must uh, make a country that is prosperous and actually a good country for all of us. So um, corruption, as you have said, is a, is a, is a challenge, but it can be, it can be done. Okay. Yeah. So what then would be your words of advice uh, for the incoming uh, chairman, given the challenges you yourself must have faced mm -hmm. in these six years? Well, uh, everybody has their own talent. And I, I also believe that every season has its own people. So my time came, I think I was for that season of bringing stability, which now has happened. I was for that season of ensuring that there is a smooth transition, which I did twice. Um, one, I had to transit one CEO to another one. And uh, the one who is now there has taken out very well, Mr. Tradi Kumbarak, is a very effective uh, young person and uh, reliable today. And now we also knew that without commissioners having a quorum, the, the commission would suffer. Mm -hmm. So. We, we were, I told you, we, we became a family and a team. So we talked together because four commissioners had come at the same time and they were all living, going to live at the same time. That again brings us back mm. to the instability of the commission. Yeah, I recall yesterday you said two left earlier. Yes. Two then, months earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we did was to sit down together as commissioners and we said, we came here to fight corruption, but now we're about to cause another problem. My friends, who are ready to live? <laughs> earlier. Well, they prayed about it. But because we knew we were working together as a family, two of them said, your grace, that's how you call me. We are going. We give us, let's leave three months earlier. Uh, Commissioner Ross Mugoy and uh, Commissioner Dr. Dabar voluntarily sacrificed their three months and left. And then we, uh, we asked our other collaborators, that is the parliament, uh, the Public Service Commission and the rest. I visited all of them. They asked me. And now we got two. So we are now three, which is a quorum. So when the other ones uh, retired again in December, we recruited two more. And for now, there's no time. Yes, we lack the quorum. 
that staggering is there. But make sure this happens if you people understand each other. It is not a force, it is a, an agreement which is mutual. And that's why I always give credit to my commissioners at that level. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that has happened, and um, <coughs> the stability is now assured. Therefore, the one who is coming in finds that stable institution. But he will bring in, he or she has to bring in her own talent. Uh, the family of ESCC has a lot of professionals and very qualified. So it is um, people who can, if he comes, I think the only advice I could say is that uh, he may not rush, he may need to listen. To, now, now he has already the commissioners who are there, four of them already. So he's, he's the, the, the one person who joins the many. Therefore, the only advice perhaps to listen to them and see how he can make his contribution uh, stronger as, as another team. All right. Yeah. Allow me to also call you your grace. Yes. Oh. Thank, <laughs> thank you so very so much uh, for speaking to uh, us uh, this evening, Archbishop Emeritus of the Anglican Church of Kenya and now immediate uh, former C uh, chairman of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Uh, yesterday at State House, he stated, I was specifically placed there to bring stability. There was a lot of turnover at that commission. So he's... So he says he's left a stable commission. It is now up uh, to the next chairman to pick up where he has left off and so that he's not an outlier, having been the first to head uh, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission successfully for his forward.